Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us for today's workshop. My name is Gavin. Uh, I'm a film and moving image production graduate, and I'm a NICO Outreach Officer at Norwich University of the Arts. Uh, so today we'll be joining with Genevieve Rudd, who will be uh, delivering a still life drawing workshop. Um, just want to go through some uh, housekeeping um, just before we get started. So first of all, if you'd like to please keep your microphones and your videos turned off uh, for the duration of this workshop, just to help with communications and just to help with uh, internet uh, connections going on so we get a smooth connection for the workshop. Um, also, um, if the uh, presenter's internet connection drops out for uh, five minutes uh, straight in a row, what we'll do, we'll end the session and then we'll try and reconnect um, and go from there. But we shouldn't have any internet issues like that at all today. Um, uh, so this is a part of a number of live workshops that we're delivering uh, throughout the coronavirus pandemic at the moment. Uh, so do keep an eye out uh, for more workshops that we're going to be uh, delivering to help uh, with staff and students at, at home during this time. Um, so, and also if you have any questions, be it to do with uh, Genevieve and her work or if there's any technical issues, uh, do make sure to use the chat function, which you should be able to find either at the bottom or the top uh, menu bar that you will have. Um, I'll be on hand throughout the whole workshop, so if there's any questions, just message me in there and uh, I'll be able to sort out any technical issues or if there's questions for Genevieve, we'll be able to have a little Q&A uh, at the end. Um, if you do have uh, any issues at all during the presentation with any content or if you're struggling with anything at home, please make sure uh, you can either chat with me in the chat function or uh, give us an email at the end and we'll be able to chat with you there. Um, so that's it for me. I'll keep quiet and I'll hand you over to Genevieve. Thank you very much, Gavin, for the introduction. So my name is Genevieve Rudd. I'm a visual artist and I'm based in the Great Yarmouth area. So I work mainly as a community artist and of course, um, because of this situation, I you know, can't do the work that I would normally do. So I've been asked by NUA to adapt my practice and beaming from my spare room at home in Goldston. And um, I'm gonna bring you today some inspiration around still life drawing. So we're gonna be working from my still life setup that I've put here in, my, in the corner of my spare room. It doesn't normally look like this, but I've found objects from around the home. So often I'm commissioned by galleries and museums to go into um, their spaces and work with groups, look at objects that are held in museum and gallery collections, and think about the value of objects and think about the stories behind objects and work with things that are in archives and collections. So of course, we're not able to do that right now. So I've got my own collection of objects at home, all sorts of um, bits and bobs here, um, as you will have yourself. Um, so today we're going to be doing some drawing inspired by objects that you can see on your screen. So hopefully you've managed to get the screen full screen so you can get the best view um, of the display that I've got here. And hopefully it will be inspiring for you. So if you wanted to do your own still life setup at home, in your own time, um, then think about how you can make an arrangement quite attractive. Now you don't have to take over a whole corner of your room like I've done here. Um, everything's kind of pinned together and on, on different stacks of little tables, but you don't have to go um, to that, that far. You can, you can do something quite small with, you know, really select a few, maybe five objects, a handful of objects. Um, you might want to think about colour. So how do things kind of contrast against each other? So for example, you can see the white poster with the black text with the black um, guitar in front of it. You can see these dark blue candlesticks against uh, light green discs. Um, and I've got different shapes that are in the foreground and the background to create layers. Um, so hopefully this display will give you some inspiration. I'm gonna be taking you through seven different drawing prompts, guides, techniques, 
ways of drawing that are going to last about anywhere between sort of one minute and five minutes. I'm going to I'm going to tell you about the the time, and I've got a little um, clock in the corner of my screen, so I'm going to let you know what the timers will be for that. So there'll be seven different prompts, and if you wish to do your own still life setup or think about the objects that you have at home that could inspire you, then you'd be more than welcome to maybe spend you know a week. Every morning you'll do one different um, drawing activity and those seven activities will, will take you through, through your week. So what you'll need to participate in today is um, something to draw on. So I've got here um, some white cartridge paper, it could be printer paper, it might be recycled sheets of paper. So whatever you've got, got to hand, um, and I put mine on a clipboard because I'm you know, not sitting at a desk, you might be sat at a desk um, today or a table. So I'm going to be sat here with um, this on my lap to draw on. You'll also need of course something to draw with. So I've got on my um, a little side table here, I've got some gel pens, um, I've got some you know different coloured um, pastels, I've got um, various um, coloured pencils, drawing pencils, pen, um, charcoal, so whatever you've got, draw with what you know, you've got to hand. So it might be pens, pencils, inks, paint, whatever it is, you know, you use um, what you've got at home. So you'll need a couple of different um, mediums and it's quite, quite good to try um, how different mediums can um, give you different effects. So I'm going to be taking you through seven different drawing activities. And if you want to swap mediums, great. And if you want to stick to the same one, that's entirely up to you. But hopefully this, this activity will be quite flexible and versatile and work with what materials you have at home. So we're going to be working from this still life setup. Hopefully you've got it full screen so you can see. So we're going to get started. So make sure you're in a good comfortable position. As I say, I'm going to be here at the sides to give you um, the, the full screen um, display. So hopefully you can get a good view um, of all the different objects and layers of things that I've put together today. Um, and so I'm going to start with pen. So I'm going to work in pen because um, you'll be able to see the work um, so I can show you. So I can I can show what I've what I've been doing and obviously you'll have your own version. Um, so I'm going to be looking from a different angle to what you're going to be looking at. I'm going to be Sort of looking into the scene whereas you're going to be looking sort of across the scene so our work might not look the same but that's absolutely fine um so just enjoy the process of uh, being challenged or trying different things some of these techniques might be familiar um but hopefully you'll enjoy the next um sort of 50 minutes to an hour of drawing it's going to be split up with smaller little activities so um get yourself comfortable get whatever your first um drawing medium is to hand um, and so for the first drawing activity, I'd like you to swap hands that you would normally, you might be set up ready, right-handed, left-handed, whatever it is. I'd like you to swap to your non-dominant hand. So we're going to be starting the activities with something really, really loose. And then we're going to be kind of honing in as we get through, work through the activities. And then at the end, we're going to loosen back up again. All right. So with your non-dominant hand, I'd like you to just embrace the wobbliness. We're just starting out. We're just warming up. Um, so think about which part of the scene you'd like to draw. You might want to focus in on one object, a small cluster of objects. You might want to have a go at the whole scene. It's entirely up to you. Um, so with your non-dominant hand, we're going to have um, three minutes to draw. So just embrace whatever wobbliness and you're welcome to get started now for the first drawing activity. So three minutes um, of non-dominant hand wobbliness. So find whatever part of the scene that catches your eye. I'm sitting sort of lower down in the screen so I can see this um, candlestick that I'm going to have a go at with my non-dominant hand, which for me is my left hand. As I say, embrace the wobbliness. It's about enjoying the process and looking. And we're just warming into it. So if you do this quite a lot, you sort of tend to get quite a bit of control on it, but that hasn't happened for me yet, but I still like to just keep going at it. So about one, 
one minute in now. You might be focusing on one object like I am, or you might have decided to think about a certain cluster of the screen. Whatever works for you. So we're one and a half minutes in, so about halfway through now. So it takes quite a bit of concentration actually, and quite a bit of control. But if you're naturally ambidextrous, then we'll be absolutely winning here. But if, like me, you're not, then that's absolutely fine. Just enjoy the, the process. Okay, so we've got about 30 seconds left, all right? So the last half a minute, just to get whatever you can down. So working with your non-dominant hand, as much in as you can for the last few seconds. All right, so last 10 seconds just to finish up. There we go. And stop wherever you are. So my non-dominant hand has produced this quite wobbly um, candlestick. Um, I've done it in pink felt, so hopefully you can see. And it is quite wobbly, but that's absolutely fine. Um, I hope you're um, pleased, maybe surprised with what you've done, but don't worry, it's the first drawing exercise. So we're gonna be doing um, six more so we can keep warming into it. So for the rest of the activities, you'll be pleased to know, you can go back to your hand that you would normally draw in, whether that's your left or right. And um, if you're ambidextrous, obviously take your pick. So, second drawing. Now, I'm gonna work back into this page. So I'm gonna create a drawing that has um, lots of layers. So several drawings on the page until I feel like it's sort of full and I like the look of it. So it's up to you whether you wanna find another, a, a blank page to draw on or whether you wanna keep drawing and add layers. You know, it's entirely up to you, but I'm gonna do um, several drawings on a page and then turn to the next one because I quite, like the idea of building up lots of um, different layers and different coloured pe felt pens but if you want to have separate drawings it's up to you. So for the next drawing activity I'm going to switch to an orange pen this time and we're going to have another um, three minutes and this one I'd like you to do um, a continuous line drawing so it might be something that's familiar to you already but once you start your drawing and I start the timer don't take your pen or your pencil or whatever it is you're using off the page until you've finished. Um, and only when I say stop, lift the pen off. So you're drawing whatever the object is with one line that might have to overlap or think of clever ways to connect. So whenever you're ready to start, you can start. So a continuous line means that pencil is, or the pen has gone onto the page. But what you don't do is lift it back off. So it means that you have to really look and focus and think about how you're going to construct that image without the luxury of um, kind of bouncing that pen or pencil around the page as you would and dipping in and out. How are you going to sort of rise to the challenge of drawing with just one line? And I find that this activity means that I go a lot slower and I work a lot slower than I normally would. And I look a lot more than I usually would too. So it's quite a nice one to do, to kind of slow you down, think about the detail. So we're one minute in to our three minutes. So remember, you're not lifting your pen or pencil or whatever it is you're using off the page. 
and it means it's just got to kind of slow down, go back over the lines, think cleverly about how you're going to make that drawing. So we're halfway through. Just think about the clever way you're going to connect up all those details without taking a pen or pencil off. And you might be finding like me, then it means you draw a lot slower and you're a lot more careful. And we're going to have one more minute. So I'm going to go back over the lines to add extra detail. Okay. So it's quite a nice, slow, careful drawing, a lot more considered. So we've got about 15 seconds left. So a chance to get those last details in, whatever it is you wanted to capture on your piece, whatever you're focusing on. Your last chance to get that in and then come to a stop when you're ready. Oh, have a bit of a breather. So it takes quite a lot of concentration, quite a bit of um, <laughs> carefulness with your hand as well. And have a look at what you created. So I did the, um, the head of the lamp here. You can see it's cutting across the um, candlestick that I drew first, which was the non-dominant hand. And then you can see the orange drawing of the lamp was done with a continuous line. So you can see where I went over the line again and, and I didn't quite meet up, but that's okay. You can see where the lines are thicker where I needed to retrace my steps as it were, to kind of go back onto another section of it. And I've decided that I'm gonna do three drawings onto this page. You might be doing the same, you might be creating a layered picture as well, or you might be doing your um, drawings on set pieces of paper, it's entirely up to you. I'm going to do drawings on uh, multiple drawings on a page and I'm going to switch to a different colour every time just so I can show and differentiate for you so you can see what I've been up to as well. Okay so third drawing activity. So this one again we're going to have three minutes and I'd like you it's a good it's a classic one that um, us artists and educators do um, I'm going to ask you to not look at your page, so just really focus on the screen. Um, you might get square eyes, all that looking and focusing on the screen, but I'd like you to just please do it for three minutes. So I'm going to switch to a different colour pen. Again, you can use your, the hand that you feel most comfortable in. You don't have to do it as a continuous line. But the drawing I'd like you to produce, I'd like it to be done so that you're not looking at your, your page. So however helps you to do that. I like to just focus on one or more objects, whatever you choose from this display, and just draw that solidly for the, for the three minutes and see how you get on. Again, it's about embracing the wobbliness, embracing those imperfections and letting off a bit of control. Um, we don't know what we're gonna produce, but let's, let's give it a go. So we're gonna have three minutes from now. So whenever you're ready, choose an object. So I am going to go for this um, money plant and I'm not looking at the page and my pen is just flowing. Um, I can see all those different leaf shapes and um, if it's your first time doing this, um, you'll probably feel like quite constrained and you want to keep flicking your eyes down onto the page. But please try and try not to. It'll be a nice surprise at the end um, about what you've produced. So I'm just looking at all those different details and kind of as my eye is sort of following on different pieces um, of the leaf and the stem and the pot, I'm just letting my pen sort of follow the same way as my eye is. And I'm not going to look down, but I'm going to just look at the time. So we're one minute in. So just let that 
lack of control, we'll just let that happen. We don't know what our work's going to look like. It will become quite surprising. And I like to do this because it's quite intuitive. And sometimes when we draw, you know, we can get a bit kind of stiff about what we do and what we produce. And it's actually quite nice to just give up, you know, your control and do a little bit of what is unexpected in a safe, in a safe way by doing art. And so it's a really quite a fun, fun thing to do. And you often make marks that you wouldn't ordinarily make. So we've got about one minute left. So just get whatever you can down and just really, really resist those eyes flicking down to the page. Just get whatever you can down. And so I'm drawing over my two images. So I'm going to come up with this, you know, really layered picture that's going to be completely unexpected with this kind of squiggly plant image in green across it. Um, but that's absolutely fine. I'm, I'm open and welcome to this, um, to this challenge. So we've got about half a minute left. I think I can see that correctly. So for the last 30 seconds or so, get whatever you can down. So not looking at that page as much as you can. It'll be a fun surprise at the end. It'll be completely unexpected, I can guarantee that. Okay, so whenever you're ready, come to a stop. Well, unexpected. I didn't expect that. Um, it's a lot more blobby than I thought it was going to look. I thought the plant was going to look really elegant. But I quite like actually um, how it looks a little bit kind of um, like it's got all these different um, petals and leaves or whatever they are sort of poking out in different direction. And I quite like how um, it's kind of swarmed my um, first drawing, which was the uh, the candlestick. And I quite like how they've come together as a, as a trio. So if you're doing the same, you might want to keep drawing on top of it. But I think I'm quite happy with that, the three images as they are. So for the next drawing, I'm going to move on to um, the other, um, a new initiate paper, another page. Um, so you might be doing yours in separate pieces of paper. You might be layering it up like I am. So um, hopefully you're getting some interesting, surprising results that you might want to do in your own time as well. So we're on to the fourth drawing activity. So we're about halfway through. Um, so for this one, I'd like you to focus on a sort of cluster of objects. It's going to be a slightly shortened exercise. It's going to be about one minute. And imagine you were looking at a skyline. So this is something that you could do. Maybe um, if you opened up um, your cupboards or your bathroom cabinet, and um, imagine if you were looking on a shelf and you would see all different heights of tins and bottles and whatever else, food packets. And imagine you would just draw just the kind of silhouettes, the outline, as if you were looking at like a cityscape. And what I'd like you to do is select out um, objects of this display just for a minute to do a kind of almost like a cityscape. So what I mean by that is, for example, if I have my pen, hopefully you'll be able to maybe see that one better. So I would go along and get this lamp, imagine it was a kind of building, and then I'd go down. Then I might get the top of the teapot and the edge of the plant and then up to the, the guitar all the way up. Then I'd come down and then my next building, as it were, might be these candlesticks. So I draw those and I just draw the kind of outline of those. And then it might link me onto this plant and I do the sort of edge of the plant and then up to my kind of um, my toilet roll sculpture and then down maybe to the fruit and the wall. So imagining um, this is almost like a kind of a skyline. So I'm not doing any of the detail that is in the object. I'm just doing an outline of the objects and where they meet together, I'm going to just draw that outline. So give it a go. All right. So just for, for one minute. So a nice sort of quickened one. I'm going to do it in landscape. So whenever you're ready to start, so have a look. So obviously mine's going to be slightly different to yours. But I'm going to do mine for this with this lamp. So I'm just going to do the edges of the outline and then where it links onto another um, object. I've got the body of the guitar here. Just 
Um, so you imagine it's just like a kind of a skyline where you don't really worry about what the detail of the object is. You must just capture those those outlines. All right, so I'm going to have just the last few seconds. Mine's gone a little bit wobbly and a bit wrong, but that's all right. So I'm just, just giving it a go, trying out different things. All right, so last few seconds. All right. So as you can see, I've got a kind of a, all these outlines of these objects, but I've not worried about the, um, the detail. So I've got the lamp outline here. I've got the body of the guitar. The shape went a bit wrong, but that's all right. I'm not worried too much. I'm gonna draw over this in a minute. And then I've started to get the arc of the, um, these foam circles that I've dotted through the scene. So that would work as a really great drawing exercise. If you opened up your bathroom cabinet or your kitchen cupboards, and you were to draw all the outlines of those bottles. Granted, it's a little bit tricky to work across the screen. I'm drawing from a different angle from you, so mine's gonna look different to yours. But if you were to draw across all those bottles and get all those interesting shapes if they're on a shelf, that would be a great one to try, um, especially as we're indoors more and, you know, do a little bit of um, creativity with our cupboards, why not? Okay, so we're on to the fifth drawing exercise now. So for this one, I'd like you to use two different drawing media. So you might have um, a pen and a pencil, two pencils, a charcoal and a graphite stick, whatever the combination, it's entirely up to you, okay? But I'd like you to hold um, a pen in each hand or a pencil in each hand or whatever it is. They don't have to be the same thing or the same color, but we're gonna have a go at drawing with two hands at once. Okay, so um, it's quite, um, again, like, it's a bit like the continuous line drawing where you happen to really go slow because you're having to kind of think in an extra careful way. Um, not like the, the, uh, the drawing where you're not looking, which is quite free and you just move. This one's quite careful and a bit like the continuous line drawing. So you're really having to think. And so if you haven't done this before, you know, get your two drawing media ready, one in each hand. I'm going for um, green in the left and pink in the right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on one object. Um, I think I'm going to do the guitar. Mine's going to be of a slightly different angle to you. And I'm going to try and draw so that the, the hands are both moving at the same time. And so that the green left hand is doing the left side of the guitar and the pink, the right hand, is doing the right hand of the guitar at the same time, okay? So we're gonna have a three minutes for this. So give it a go, get your two drawing medias ready, choose an object and draw with both hands at the same time. And see, see how you get on with that as a bit of a challenge. So um, ready, ready when you are. So I'm gonna do the neck of the guitar. It really um, takes, quite a bit of thinking about um, and it's quite tricky but give it a go because it really does make you think and go quite slowly so just like the continuous line drawing um, you're working quite slowly you can see I've got one colour for one side and another for, for another, so you can see um, a kind of comparison. And I find it makes both hands go very wobbly. And so you sort of, again, it's like just the, just the freedom of doing and not worrying too much and um, just giving it a go. So we've had about a minute now. So do what you can and see how much you can do, you know, with, with those two hands, you know, what, and what effect does that have on 
both your hands and your concentration. strings. So we've got about a minute left. So it's quite tricky, but it's a good challenge. It's always good to challenge yourself creatively. And try any new things. And I hope you're getting on okay. Trying to control both hands. All right, so we're going to have the last half a minute now. So last 30 seconds to get what you can down. So um, how can you keep both hands drawing at the same time? And what, what results does that give you? How does that affect your drawing? How is it different to just using one hand? So we're gonna have the last five seconds, just the last little details. Oh, right. Give both your hands a shake. That's two hands. It's pretty good. I find that takes so much concentration. I find it quite hard to talk at the same time, but <laughs> it's quite tricky. So you can see here my pink and green guitar, and um, I find it just makes it all really wobbly and really. Um, you have to really focus. And actually, I um, would normally draw and work with my my right hand. And I find that just the nature of <laughs> having to work with your left hand as well um, really makes the right hand quite difficult. It makes you think and it makes you slow down. And I think, you know, one of the purposes of drawing is about, um, it's as much about the process as about the observation and what you see and what you choose to include or exclude. And um, I, I use drawing a lot um, in the context of museums and galleries to really look closely. And I think an activity like this really makes you slow down and not make any kind of assumptions because you can't just speed through it in the way that you normally would. And also I really like um, coming up with drawings that are quite surprising and you make marks in quite a different way. So hopefully you enjoyed that and give it a go in your own time as well. Um, so that was drawing activity number five. So we're now on to number six. So for this one, I'd like you to um, draw with as much detail as you can. So we're kind of coming into sort of more focus and being more kind of careful about our drawing. And so draw with the two hands is a good way to kind of really um, hone in and practice and um, become more focused, become sort of slower. So I'd like you to draw um, an object in as much detail as you can. So think about those chips, those imperfections, those reflections, those little nicks and details that maybe um, would be overlooked if you just quickly glanced at the object. But when you take the care and the time and the effort to really look at something very closely, pick up those details that you find. Now, because we're obviously working over a screen, it might be that you've got great quality picture, I hope you have, and that you can choose something here. But if you haven't, then you might have something to hand. Um, you might be at your dining table and there's you know, a knife and fork there, um, a salt and pepper shaker. You might be at your desk and you've got a pencil sharpener um, or an object that you've got to hand that you could look at a bit closer and a bit better than if you were, for example, trying to pick something off the screen. So it's entirely up to you. So choose an object that's either in this scene that you think you can look at really clearly. If you can't, then just grab whatever it is to hand. It might be the you know, slippers that you're wearing, um, jewelry that you've got on, just something that is immediate to hand, another drawing tool that you've got, and draw, and we're gonna have three minutes to draw much detail as you can and include all those imperfections so we've kind of honed in all right so we've come a lot closer and we're kind of slowing down um, choose a different page or work on the same page it's entirely up to you 
I'm going to go for a fresh page for this and I'm going to give you three minutes as much detail as you can on one object so ready when you are so get started for three minutes um, I'm going to go for a charcoal stick reflex stick rather so what is it in the object that you've chosen that you think that you've picked up from looking at it that you know if someone else was to glance at it actually they might not notice those details what is it that you can now notice by really really closely looking So I'm looking at this plant pot and I can see it's kind of got a it's kind of rib edge on it and I can also see that it's got reflections. <laughs> so about one minute in. Try to get in as much detail as you can. So what is it that you can pick up? Okay, so we're going to have another sort of half a minute or so. You might want to include different drawing media that you've got in front of you. That's what I'm um, using here. So I'm including some different um, textures and different colours and can see all these dots and marks and scratches. So we're going to have the last sort of 20 seconds or so. This might be something that you want to spend a little bit longer on, I'm sure, in your, in your own time. And it might be something good to kind of work towards when you're working on your own drawing. So last five seconds. Okay. No. <laughs> so for that one, I was looking at the side of the pot and I was sort of looking at all those different reflections and patterns that were um, repeated throughout that pot that actually glancing at it, I probably noticed that it, that it had these kind of um, ribbed edges along it. It had a kind of a, a wave sort of pattern through it. But um, by looking really close, I found that the reflection um, repeated and, and found its way through and I also picked up those um, a little bit of sort of sticker mark um, and there's like a dot of paint on it um, and all these little things that um, I've sort of discovered about this pot by looking really close. So we're on to our last drawing activity. Um, so we've been drawing to um, loosen up and to focus closer um, so I wanted to end um, the drawing activity by doing an activity which is um, really loose and really free. So we kind of loosen back out into our day um, by something um, that you might have done before. But hopefully um, you picked up that you were asked, um, and if you haven't got it, don't worry, you can dash around the house and find something. Something that you can attach a pencil or a pen or whatever your drawing media is. So a longer object. So for example, you might have a spatula, a spoon, um, you might have a knitting needle, uh, you might have a ruler with you. So something that's long like this. And um, I also have rubber bands here, but I can't quite locate them. Where is they gone? Oh, there they are, on my lap. Um, so I've got a couple of rubber bands. So I'm gonna choose one of these. Um, I'm going to go for the wooden spoon. So hopefully you've got something that you can now tie on, maybe the hairband, a rubber band, piece of string, um, one of your drawing media, a pen, a pencil, a graphite stick, onto the end and make a really long drawing tool. All right, so this might be something that you want to go and make in your own time, make it really, really long. But for this, I just wanted to just do that final bit of drawing where we just loosen back out again. But hopefully you've got something like this. Um, as I say, I'm going to go for the wooden spoon. 
and I'm going to go um, back to my pen, I'm going to go for the purple one and I'm going to use the rubber band to attach it on. In fact, I'm going to put the lid on while I do that because I know I'll just get it all over my hands. I'm just going to tie on using a rubber band. There we go. Might use a couple just to make it secure. So what we're doing is making a long drawing tool that again is going to loosen us back out again. And um, so we've been doing a couple of the last couple of drawing activities. Um, we're about um, really kind of focusing, so looking at as much detail as you can, both hands at once, was really about kind of that focused drawing. So we were doing it for three minute chunks, so hopefully it was quite digestible. But just for this last one, so you can see here, my um, drawing implement is a wooden spoon with a pen on the end, attached with a rubber band. Um, in your own time, you can probably have quite a lot of fun with this. Um, you could do it to like a broom handle, a mop, um, you know, a garden cane, you could go really wild with it. So hopefully this will give you a little taste of something that you can do in your own time and take further. So I'm going to try and <laughs> do this with the limited space that I've got so I can still um, be on camera and not block your view. Um, so hold your um, long drawing tool at the end. I'm going to use the stirry bit of the spoon. And so we're going to have um, three minutes, so last three minute drawing exercise. So choose your object, um, whatever it is. So if I put my paper down here, hopefully it's not going to block too much of your view and give me a little bit of arm stretch. Um, so choose whatever object you want to draw for the next three minutes. So starting now with your long drawing tool. So we're kind of going back out to being sort of loose, loosen ourselves back out into the day. So I'm doing this um, teapot that's down here. Um, so the longer the drawing tool, the looser and the freer, and the more um, kind of expressive and the less control that you will have um, in your work. Just do the spell. So, so again, this is one of those drawing activities where you know the outcome just kind of happens, and we're just kind of guiding our pen or pencil to um, capture that, whatever it is. Um, I'm going to move on to the bananas now, which is looking very wobbly. So we're one minute in. So just think about what it's like, you know, to draw, to draw in this way. How is it different to, you know, how you usually might draw? You know, sometimes people, when they draw, they're quite hunched over the page and they draw quite small. I think a drawing activity like this means that you um, often draw bigger and you draw freer. And again, unexpected results, which I completely welcome um, when I'm art making. I think it's kind of the point of it, you know, discovering the unexpected. So we're going to have another minute. Okay, so the last last minute. Um, so do as much as you can with your long drawing tool. Okay, it's all very lovely. But that's good. Probably's good. So we're going to have a last. 30 seconds, so half a minute. My timings might be a little bit off, but that's all right. So you want to keep holding whatever your drawing tool is at the right at the end. And you can really sort of accentuate that with a longer object in your own time. So last 10 seconds now, just to finish off whatever details you can. Oh, 
There we go. So give your hands a break. Give your arms a, arms a stretch out. I'm going to dismantle my drawing tool. And I'm going to come and show you. So I did the I did it in purple this time, so I've overlayers on my detail um, little study. So I've got a, a lovely wobbly um, teapot with a spider plant coming across, sat on a stack of records with a banana and a lamp beaming across. Um, so hopefully you've got something equally as free and wobbly. And um, it's, again, it's one of those drawing activities where you make marks that are different to what you would do um, when you would just sit down and, and just pick up a pencil and draw. These activities are designed to um, get you to think and um, try things out in a more creative way. So um, I'm going to ask Gavin to pop the slideshow on just to look at a couple of artists examples of um, a couple of different artists who also um, work in quite free um, ways. Um, so the first one, this is an example by Matisse. And so Matisse often did um, what they call blind drawings. Again, so our drawing without looking technique. And you can see there's really like free brush strokes. Um, and um, as, you'll, as you'll know as well, he did the um, lots of fantastic collages where he was uh, drawing with scissors. So cutting out those free shapes. And so Matisse is one of those artists that um, drew and created in a really free way. So it was about that kind of expression and about those um, flowing lines, as you can see from this um, drawing. Um, so just on to the next slide. Um, so the next image is of Matisse and you can see this, um, it looks, it's kind of got a bit of um, the kind of continuous line. You can see the kind of lips and the, and the chin there and a little bit of also the, the blind drawing as well. Um, so the drawing without looking. Um, and I really love this, this picture because um, it just looks really free and fun. But it, the, whilst the, um, the drawing, the portrait isn't like, you know, anatomically accurate as such, it's not like a, you know, um, a really kind of finesse drawing. It's actually very sophisticated in its simplicity um, and it's also really full of character so you know don't be afraid to make something that's wobbly. Um, you know if you're going to capture that character and capture that essence I think that takes real observation and really kind of enjoying that process. Um, so on to the next slide. So the last one, this is an artist called Fraser Scarf, and I recently got a really great book um, called Ways of Drawing, and it was produced by the Royal Drawing School, um, only I think the beginning of this year, maybe the end of last year, anyway, it's a pretty brand new book. And so this artist, Fraser Scarf, um, he plays with um, all those different mark making techniques you can do. So um, you can see the drawing on the left, it says pushing, so slow, direct, strong. So just really think about that quality of line. So drawing is a process um, rather than making a kind of finessed outcome. And on the right, that picture is called whipping. So whipping fast, strong and indirect. So it's really thinking about how drawings are made and the process um, and enjoying that, you know, in a really fun and creative way. Um, so those are my couple of artist examples. So the first one being Matisse and the other one, um, Fraser Scarf. But I think the best inspiration is just to just to do it and try out, you know, for yourself. Um, so thank you very much. And I hope you enjoyed. And I think the next slide um, tells you about how you can share your results. So um, I hope you've um, had a really good time and enjoy yourself and there's some little details on the bottom there um to share what you've been doing on, on social media so thanks very much great thank you very much uh genevieve hopefully you've all uh enjoyed the workshop there so i just want to give you another little chance if you do have any questions for genevieve while she's here uh use the chat function um and make sure to get some questions in um, thank you all very much and yes, just to reiterate um, that, you know, we love to see your work. So please use the uh, Twitter and the Instagram hashtags at the bottom and, you know, send some work across. We'd love to see it and we'd love to shout it out to everybody else on our channels there. Um, ah, not so much questions, but just lots of thank yous there, Genevieve. 
Oh, that's good. I'm really glad. It's really nice. Um, this is a really different way for working for me. So normally I would um, be in schools or with groups or in public spaces with groups of people. Um, so it's really um, nice to see um, those comments coming through. Um, sometimes, you know, you don't know <laughs> who you're, you know, coming across to, um, but it's really good if, if you've enjoyed it, then that's, that's great. And it'd be lovely to see what you've been up to as we can't um, share in the room together. If you can share that on social media, that'd be really lovely. Great. Um, oh, so we've got a question about how would a school be able to book you? Um, that would probably be through newer through you. So, I guess that would be. so yes. Um, so that will be. So if you uh, send an email to the email address there, um, arts at takeyourplace.ac.uk, um, and we'll be able to. Uh, Try and get Genevieve, and we also have other guest artists as well. So it's all part of the Nico projects that we deliver. Um, and because of the lockdown in a minute, we're really pushing that forward to make it more accessible to everyone. So if you are a teacher or a staff member, and you know you're interested in having Genevieve uh, deliver some workshops, particularly for your class, uh, send us an email. Like I said, it's arts at takeitplace.ac.uk, and uh, we can go from there. Yeah, that would be, you know, it'd be lovely to um, get out into schools again when it's safe to. Um, but I'm really glad um, people have been enjoying it. And I really love working with with school groups. So um, that would be lovely. Um, but I hope you've enjoyed enjoyed this workshop as well. Great. Um, and just one more comment, uh, just to give anybody else a chance to type up a question if they have one. But we've got someone commenting that... Um, force them to go outside of their comfort zone. So oh, great. That. yeah, that's good. I think these are activities which, um, you know, sometimes if you feel like you want to do something, but you're a bit stuck, actually it's quite a nice place to get started. And then you can get started in a, in a more kind of refreshing way. Um, then hopefully it'll kind of spark more creativity and, um, yeah, it's good to kind of challenge yourself creatively. Great. I think that's it from everybody then with questions and whatnot. So again, we'll wrap it up there, but thank you all so much for uh, joining in and I hope you all enjoyed that. And a huge thank you for Genevieve for delivering the session there. Oh, you're welcome. And we've got the details there. Um, the recording will go out onto uh, YouTube or some other platform so anybody can access it anytime. But for now, thank you very much. See you all soon and take care. Bye.